Anyway, so let's go ahead and get this video started. Hey, what's everybody? Uh, SPS Devil here. Uh, finished my first 24 hour run for the uh, 24 hour witch doctor. If you guys don't know what a 24 hour witch doctor is, is the reason why we're doing this is because season soon is going to be coming out soon for Diablo and plus people in general needed a guide to what to do when they start a new witch doctor so I figured I'd just knock out two birds with one stone. So it doesn't matter if you're just simply making a new witch doctor character, uh, if you played through the game already before. Um, if you're new to the game and you don't have anything to start off with, pretty much, uh, this, uh, itinerary plan for a new Witch Doctor, or whenever you're starting off something new, whether, like I said, you're a new player or you're in Seasons, is pretty much a nice structure for what to focus on and what to get done in your first 24 hours or in-game hours of a Witch Doctor. Now, if you do this in a group, of course, the results are going to be even faster because you get more experience and you can rely on other people to get boosted on through. Uh, if you get power leveled, well, kind of defeats the whole purpose, but if you get power leveled, that's cool too, and you could still use this as a structured way to start focusing on what items and get yourself, you know, situated so you can start doing T6 runs and eventually start doing greater rifts. So I think this can pertain to anybody. Um, but it's going to pertain to like mostly the people like that make a brand spank a new witch doctor or start a new character off in seasons. I think that's going to be pretty interesting and what have you not. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, pretty much for the first uh, eight hours when I was initially doing this build, it actually uh, came out pretty decent. I was able to do 1 through 70 in 8 hours and 1 minute. However, the slowest part of the whole leveling aspect was towards the beginning and towards the end. I think I got some bad luck while leveling. Um, in the beginning, I never thought of actually using uh, the NPCs to actually help myself get some decent gear because uh, it, 1 to 10 took a really long time because I just couldn't find a decent weapon to do good damage and just advance the game onward. But when I make a new level 1 character, what I'm actually going to start doing is going over to these NPCs every time I get a level and raiding them and checking them to see if they have a decent two-handed weapon or whatever I can buy. So, uh, And I might even start story mode for a little bit just to get him a little bit ahead or further, but I think bounties is okay to start off with. Um, I was doing the full bounty clears, which is something I don't think you need to do. When I was really trying to get the 1 through 70 process quick as possible, and keep in mind, like I said, this is assuming that you're playing like a seasoned character or you're making a brand new witch doctor. Now, if you have uh, things like Hellfire Amulet and other things to speed up the leveling process, of course that's going to make it go a lot quicker than just 8 hours. But the 8 hours was done by myself solo and just using the adventure mode uh, at my disposal and just you know doing that over and over again to try to figure out what can we do in terms of what bounties to skip and what things to do and what to maximize but uh, let me just get to the point um, so I started off at level one um, and my whole plan was to once I get to level I do believe 11 or I think it was 12 is to go haunt and as soon as I got haunt I switched difficulty from normal to hard and after I did that, uh, with the Haunt ability, it was just really simple and straightforward that uh, it was real easy to level because the only thing I needed to do was ensure that I had a decent two-handed weapon. So like for the bounties right here, hopefully my screen doesn't block everything. No, it doesn't. Like for instance, I would always do the Fills of Misery bounties. I would do the Weeping Hollow bounties. I'd do the Northern uh, uh Highlands Bounty. I would never ever ever do the Cabins of Aranai. Now, the reason for this is because the place is huge and the bosses take a long time to kill, especially when you set the difficulty higher. Now, if you're just running a normal, you can just do all the bounties, it doesn't matter. But what I noticed is that on Master, for the most part, the only thing that really hurt me on Masters or the higher difficulties in normal and hard was that the boss's HP had a lot of health. So I just initially just started skipping those and just doing whatever bounties I can. And then if I came across the Cabins of R and I, or if I came across uh, Halls of Agony, kill the Butcher, or even if I came to Royal Crypts, kill the Skeleton King, I would skip those completely and I would just keep focusing on that. So just by simply doing that, I was able to get, like I said, to 70 and 8 hours in one minute. I think I can improve the time by 30 to 40 minutes just for the early leveling phase. Because once you get up in leveling and you start doing well, you don't have to really worry about much. So. The basic game plan was, like I said again, get to level 12, 
get hot, up the difficulty to hard, then you basically just level up on hard until you get to level 21. Now, I don't know if I could put the difficulty up higher. If I could actually use the NPCs to get some decent weapons early on, I might actually up the difficulty from, uh, from hard up to the next level, which I do believe is expert and then finally master. So I might look into in the next uh, Witch Doctor I make for the, tri the second trials. I might do 1 to 12 on normal, then go all the way from uh, hard to directly to expert, because now I know I need to start using the NPCs to actually get my weapons and stuff like that. Because like I said, when I actually started utilizing the NPCs for weapons and looking at them every time, like I gained a level to see if they have any better weapons and just equipping whatever the strongest weapon is, whatever two-hander I can get, uh, the leveling went a lot easier. But the early leveling game, I wasn't really doing all that practice until I was like later on at level 30 and plus. So like I said, the first one to level 30, I think I can get that down to at least an hour or like 50 minutes which would be really good and that would overall lessen the time it takes to level if you're playing solo now like again like i said if you're playing in a group um it will go a lot quicker because you have everybody set up together everybody's working together so like i said uh i'm just trying to figure out or get really good at the leveling initially and uh, understand what i can do better to improve my time so that's going to be a part of it um levels 30 through 60 were pretty solid 60 through 65 was solid 65 to 70 wasn't that bad but towards 67 to 70 was getting kind of slow mostly because i couldn't find myself a decent weapon so like i said if you can just keep finding good weapons or you find a nice solid weapon you could just this guy it's real easy to get to 70 fairly quickly if you're just focusing on bounties and you know and prioritize your time but yeah so basically act one bounties Field of Misery, Weeping Hollow, Northern Highlands, all fantastic. Cathedral Loves, who's great. Caverns or Aranai is bad. Royal Crypts are okay as long as you're not killing the Skeleton King. And then Halls of Agony is okay as long as you're not killing the Butcher. But if you have to kill the Butcher, you have to kill the Queen, or you have to kill the Skeleton King, just skip it. So sometimes you'd only do three, maybe three or four bounties, and you'd have the fifth bounty be the last one. Just reset it because you just it just takes too long. Um, for what difficulty you're setting it high because you're setting it to a higher difficulty to get more experience to get shit done um, So that was pretty much for the leveling experience uh, It's completely RNG if you keep getting good two-handed weapons and they keep dropping you nice stuff You'll level very quickly. I really didn't try to craft anything because I felt like it's a waste of time And I just kind of sold everything for money, which to me. I think I'm going to keep the same way um, but really focusing on those first 30 levels and trying to slim off the time and what I'm doing is that's what I'm going to try to practice next because I really do need to um, cut down on those times and what have you not. Uh, outside of that, um, the leveling process is pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm pretty sure in seasons or in new stuff they'll have some type of exploit that people will do for a while and then they'll nerf it. But if you're playing uh, legitimately or you're not using exploits and shit like that, uh, grinding the bounties up and focus firing on only certain bounties that don't take too long I think it's definitely a strong way to go if you want to level up a witch doctor fast and you still want to play it legitimately you don't want to use any kind of crazy outside sources so that's what I recommend for that and on the second trials like I said again I'm going to focus on uh, really working on that first 1 to 30 because um, if I can get levels 1 through 30 in the first hour that will cut the the the, the the, it will cut off one to eight, one to seventy, taking eight hours, maybe down to seven and a half hours, maybe seven to fifteen minutes. So I got to get really good in those first thirty levels because that's really important. So uh, other than that, leveling went pretty decent. Eight hours to get to level seventy. Uh, outside of that, the next session was. Uh, let me go ahead and bring up my little list. You guys won't be able to see it, but I have it written down here for what I was going to plan out. Here we go. Um, so the first eight hours. It was to plan out the skills while leveling. Passes at what levels? So like what levels do I take what passes? What levels do I take what skills? Um, weapons to use while leveling, which is obviously two-handed weapons. And uh, I pretty much got a good feeling out for that, so the leveling part won't be too hard. Now the next set in the next eight hours, because like I said, it's a 24-hour stop. The first eight hours takes for leveling. Uh, like I said, reducing that leveling time even by 30 to 40 minutes will help because that means more times for the second and third stages, which is really, um, I don't even really think there is a second and third stage. It just seems like, in it, like after you're leveling, you want to get to Torment level 1 right away. And uh, after you get to Torment level 1 right away, then you want to get to Torment level 3 right away. 
uh, and then hopefully at the end of you running your first 24 hours on T3 or just getting it all figured out, you can run T6 fast. And at, towards the end, I could actually run T6 with this build, but it was very slow and I didn't really like it. Um, I know when I initially first started and when I hit level 70, I had some decent money and some okay items. So one of the first things I actually uh, ended up doing was after I upgraded all my, um, upgraded the Enchantress, upgraded the Blacksmith, upgraded the Jeweler to all the max levels, um, I came over here and I actually started crafting these uh, amulets and these rings. And the reason I do that is because they're very cheap to craft, and uh, I got a solid one. This like this ring I crafted right here is in crit percent chance, critical damage, and socket, and that's what you really need early on. You need two rings like that, and then you also need a uh, nice necklace that can do that as well. And using the amulets and the rings that's for crafting, that's probably the best thing you need to focus on. And the next time I max out my levels, I think that's the first thing I'm going to focus on, because once you get two solid rings with ink, critical percent chance, critical damage, and socket, and then you also get a necklace of the same way. Once you get all three, then the rest is easy. Because like I said, you have to have good rings and you have to have a good necklace. That is really important. Weapon can be kind of anything. Getting a good weapon is not too hard. I got real fortunate in this run, but the main thing is is getting a, like, like towards the end, I was still like on hour 22, I was still looking to get a decent, you know, ring combination with the necklace. So in the next run, that will be what I focus on in terms of crafting over everything else. So I will spend all my resources on getting two solid rings and then a solid necklace. So that's what I'm going to do in the future to kind of start solidifying everything and getting everything a little bit more better or streamlined after I get the leveling process done. So leveling process straight to, you know, grinding out. Uh, I started doing regular rifts and stuff like that until I had a decent amount of stuff to do torment level one. I had like four million toughness or three, three or four million toughness, about 500k DPS. And that was more than enough to do torment one easy. So um, again, attacking the rifts early on is really nice to get those rings set up. So I'll probably the next time when I hit 70, I'll just spam rips until I can get rings. Two nice rings and a nice necklace. And then once I get those, then I'll transition to bounties. Because at that point, when you transition to bounties and stuff like that on Torment level one, you're doing it to get a ring of Royal Grandeur. That's a ring you want to get, and you want to get a semi-decent one. I was actually able to get this one that was pretty nice. And attack speed, and then I'll re-roll one of the effects to critical damage. I, critical damage or critical chance would have been fine, and it had a socket. Because that's what you initially want to go for. is Because you want the Ring of Royal Grandeur, because there's some nice combinations you can do with the set items when you're playing. So, uh, like I said, first thing is getting your yellow rings and your yellow amulet. Doing rifts. Then it's doing Torment Level 1 Bounties, and the Torment Level 1 Bounties get you more craftable materials, give you a chance to kill a goblin, you might get a goblin rift and stuff like that. And also uh, advance onward, and uh, just basically start farming up, getting your character with the appropriate amount of uh, craftables, money, all that stuff is very important, because you're going to need money for re-rolls and all that stuff that gets very expensive. So again, rings and amulet first then bounties on torment level one and you farm that a while until you at least get a decent ring of royal grandeur and after you get your decent ring of royal grandeur then what you do is after that point um you can go right back into doing rifts but if you farm bounties over and over again and you're just trying to you know make decent rolls on your items or you know you're just putting on whatever yellows you can manage to get for your chest your pants whatever using whatever legendaries and just trying to get some stable nice okay decent rolls by the time you get a decent ring of royal grandeur and you start going back into uh, uh, rifts, you could probably start doing rifts at torment level three. So once you can get into doing rifts at torment level three, that's when things start going pretty well. Because once you can do torment level three, you actually get a decent amount of gold from doing bounties. You get a decent amount of gold from doing rifts, and you get a decent amount of blood shards to start accumulating in your stash. Um, and I mean that's pretty much what I did for the first. Uh, initial set when I was getting geared up when I started leveling at 70 so again I know we re reiterated this once before but it was rings uh, to get the basic decent rings and then it was bounties to get a ring of royal grandeur and uh, 
the only thing I was doing sidewise while doing this, I was spending all my blood shards on getting a Witch Doctor helmet. Now, I got really fortunate in this run because uh, with my first six helmets, I spammed, or like seven or eight, because remember when you're leveling, you're building up blood shards and you shouldn't be spending your blood shards till 70. When I hit 70, like the first eight masks I spammed, I got a Mask of Drum. So if you get a Mask of Drum, it's just pretty much, well, I'm gonna just start going towards the pet build. Now, if I got myself a Quizzicodal, I would have started leaning towards the Quizzicodal build. If I would have got, uh, you know, Grim Reaper, then I would have leaned towards the Grim Reaper build. So really, that's where the thing is going to start diverging and start being based a little bit off RNG because depending on what your initial Witch Doctor helmet is, that's the build you need to commit to so you can just get the T6 so you can start farming and going towards the build that you want to do. So like I said, let me see here my little itinerary. Uh, setting up initial progression gear, we covered that. That was about the rings and the animals getting that situated. Uh, and burning all the rift keystones which means to start burning off rifts so we can get that initial nice set uh, nice yellow set of items rare items that are pretty much re-rolled pretty decently that can get me farming at T1 right away um, and we hit torment level 1 getting the boon of the hoarder gem and the third trial I'm actually gonna focus on getting that and by doing area of the core runs but I'll explain that later the reason why you want to focus on um, I would say you want to focus on getting a boon of the hoarder gem in the beginning because if you don't have to worry about gold that makes this a lot easier and I think you can be actually gear out your character a lot quicker once well I don't know if it's not if it's yeah it is you can um, if you get a boon of the hoarder gem early on in seasons that makes your life a lot easier because you can get a lot of gold and gold is the only restricting thing early on that hurts you because the crafting materials you just gotta kill do stuff in rips to get the crafting materials the gold is what's gonna hold you back so I'm gonna incorporate that in the third trial I don't know if I'll try for that in, two, in, the, in the second trial because um, maybe if I make up some extra time like 30 or 40 minutes early on maybe I can have a certain segment where I put it on normal and I just farm core the area for goblins until I get a goblin portal get the boon of the hoarder gem and slap that in a ring and get a bunch of gold and then I won't have a problem uh, with re-rolls and if I don't have a problem with re-rolls that will make the build even better because then I can just spam gold until I get the rolls that I want and or spam re-rolls until I get the, uh, the rolls that I want and then take that extra gold and start focusing on upgrading my level gems because my gems did take a little bit of a hit in this first trial um, but that's gonna be in the future one so yeah the first initial set we set up an initial progression gear within an hour and a half. I had some nice yellow gear that let me do torment level one. Then we started doing bounties. So that was able to acquire that nice voodoo helm, the Jerome helm, which basically pushed me towards pets. And we got really lucky because we got a Renho flailer shortly after that. So basically after the leveling process, the next eight hours of grinding, I got a Jerome and I got a Renho flailer. So when I got those, I said, all I need to do is just simply build around those two items because those items will carry me through everything like that. So. That was pretty much the second part of the uh, the 24 hour witch doctor first eight was for leveling the next eight was for grinding and getting the foundation and also determining what build I'm going to go based on what drops I got. I got a drama and I got a rental flailer. We're going pet build. So that's basically what I ended up committing to. Um, I'm trying to think what happened after that. So I mean it was a pretty straightforward day. I had some nice drops. I found a hamakos which was pretty nice and that actually ended up working well with the build or getting my witch doctor started. but. Uh, what I'm also going to do inside the, the 24 hour guide is I'm also going to have it so that if you find certain legendary voodoo helms, I'm going to have different builds that are listed so you guys will know, okay, well, I got a Jerome, what should I go? I got a Quizzicola, what should I go? I got a Grim Reaper, what I should go? I got a Carnival, what should I go? So you guys know that when you get a certain item or a certain thing, you can pull all your resources and focus on going that build just so you can get yourself the T6, regardless of whatever drops for you. So. I got a drum, I got a Reno flailer, that's what I committed to. As soon as I saw that, I said, okay, well, we're going to put all the resources into that. So, I mean, that's pretty much what happened for the first eight hours. Uh, and then also, what I did is, for the first four hours, I was basically telling myself, you know, I'm not going to worry about the greater rift, but then I actually got some trial rift stones that dropped, and I was like, okay, well, Maybe I don't have to do the first eight hours of just getting to Torment 1 then getting to Torment 3 and just farming. I said, you know, I need to go ahead and start getting these gems right away. So on the second day, um, the first four hours was just getting situated and acclimated and just making sure my gear was pretty decent and getting to Torment Level 1 because you need to get to Torment Level 1 before you even fuck with Greater Rift because the Greater Rift Trial Token doesn't drop unless you're on Torment 1 or higher and that's when you start getting set items. So 
when I was actually able to uh, get to tournament level one, I was like, well, I got some, you know, greater rift shards. I should just go ahead and get the gems because there's some gems that are initially very powerful. Now, for Renho Flailer build, um, of course, Bane of the Trap is very powerful. 15% extra damage straight up every time it gets CC'd. So Bane of the Trap was an obvious choice. Gugaka Swiftness, obvious choice because the attack speed increased and it's real easy and it, it's really good at base level. Now, like I said, I'd love to use something like Bane of the Trap, Infectious Toxicity Gem, and maybe, um, I don't know, maybe Simplicity, but Simplicity doesn't get good until you rank up to 25. And I don't believe you should worry too much about ranking up your gems within the first 24 hours, just more or less getting your gear situated and set up. Bane of the Powerful was okay, but this is only good when you start leveling it up. So I took the gems that seem to make sense at base level. The Enforcer Gem is just a 15% increased damage to pets is better than nothing. Now, if you wanted to switch this out for Lightning Reef or something that procs, that makes sense. But I liked it because it was like, okay, well, it makes my pets hit harder and I have a bunch of pets out. Um, Beta the Trap, that's always good. That's good at base level. So I said, okay, I'm going to use that. And then, of course, Gugaka Swiftness. So once I was, the first, after the first four hours of getting set up and getting the Torment level one, um, I was like, okay, well, let's go ahead and get these gems. And basically, the, what I do is like, I had like maybe four or five Greater Rift Shards. So, I would use it at the trial, leave immediately, fail the trial, start at level one, and then I would just go up from one to maybe three, three to seven, seven to 10, 10 to 15, and around around 15, I started to start, like it started to go like, yeah, I started to get my ass whooped. So I said, okay, once it gets to about 15, 16, I'll stop and just upgrade my gems initially. And the main reason why you wanna do it at low levels, cause you wanna get all the legendary gems right away, or at least you want to get the three that you wanna basically get. So. First four hours was getting to tournament level one and getting situated and looking into Ring of Royal Grandor and different things of that nature. The next four hours, I focused on getting all the legendary gems, but it really didn't take too long. It took about an hour. I already get all the legendary gems, so with the remainder of the hours I had for the, the second day, I focused on doing bounties and rifts. So I can keep looking for that Ring of Royal Grandor, getting money, and then also doing the rifts to get more crafting materials and saving all that up. Now, on the last of the final eight days, uh, of last of the, the last day, the final eight hours, from hours 16 to 24, um, I was already at Torment level three. I had the gems that I wanted. I was pretty happy about everything. So then I just focused on running as many T3 rips as possible um, because I didn't have what I needed to get to T6 because even if I, at, right now I could do T6, but it wasn't that great. So I just said, okay, let me focus on Torment level three, run the rips. Uh, the experience was going pretty well. I was using Ruby. I uh, got my Paragon levels up. Um, it went really clean. I got real lucky. Like I said, I got a Renho Flither and I got a Mask of Drum. And then I got real lucky because then I got the Ogd Hill. So, well, I won't say it's luck because within the first 24 hours, you should have a Kane's Destiny set and you should have an Ogd Hills. Those drop, whether they drop early in the run or they drop later. I mean, the first 24 hours you should have those. So I knew I was going to get Ogdles, and I knew I was going to get Canes, so I wanted to make sure I had a solid Ring of Royal Grandor, which I did, uh, so that when I got those, I can run the typical pet build thing that you use is, uh, you know, two-piece Ogdles, two-piece Canes. And I got really lucky because on hour 20, I got a Tasker and Theo Trifecta. I don't know how I had the luck to get this, but I was pretty uh, lucky when I got it. So when I had this, then it was just pretty much like, okay, well, I mean, it, it made the last... Eight, like the last, what, four hours of grinding real easy because the task and Theo. So once I had the two-piece Ogdo, I had the two-piece Canes, and I was sitting to myself, well, I was like, well, I got a task and Theo too, and I got a Renho Flayla, and I got a Jerome. I said, well, I should just try to, you know, I would usually like to try to focus on one type of element, but I kind of said, well, I don't have time for that, and it'll cost too much to try to go for physical roles and stuff like that. I just want to get my sheet DPS up. So I just committed to just basically using the Steady Strikers. They have Int, Vitality, Attack, Speed, and Crit. Um, I use a two-piece Canes, two-piece Ogdos, Ring of Royal Grand Door. I got the Decent Ring, and then I was actually able to get lucky and get this Hana Baxa with Int, Critical Percent Chance, of Critical Damage, and Socket. And then I got the Ukapun Serpent, because Ukapun Serpent, it's like your first major mitigating damage source. Uh, when you're trying to make the attempt to get the T6 before you get Unity Ring, so I definitely wanted to run that. And I was saying to myself, okay, I got a Harrington's Belt, so that's pretty good damage amp when I open up chests, because Harrington's is pretty solid outside of Greater Rifts. So when I sat down and looked at everything, uh, what I'm reflecting back on is that you're pretty much guaranteed you're going to get Ogles. You're going to get Canes. So you want to pick up your Ring of Royal Grandor, and you want to get those sets. 
because they're going to work very good for you and help out a lot. Now, realistically, I'm not going to get a, uh, get a tasker in Theo all the time. But what I was thinking to myself is that I can have an Ogdos on my shoulder and Ogdos on my bracer. I can have canes on my pants and I can have canes on my gloves because realistically, you're not going to get a tasker in Theo unless you're very lucky in the first 24 hours. So what that leaves open is my chest, my boots, and my offhand. So one thing I was disappointed in myself is I didn't think about going Zunimasa because Zunimasa drops a real high drop for some reason. They're very easy to get. Um, I could have easily got a Zunimasa chest, got Zunimasa shoes, got Zunimasa offhand, and then I would have a permanent fetish army on top of the 15 I produced to have 23 fetishes. So that's something I learned a little bit too late in the run. So on my next trial run, after the leveling sequence happens, and after I get my initial voodoo item, regardless of what build I go, I am probably going to target a three-piece Zunimasa. Because all I need is the chest, the boots, the offhand. The offhand, when I was spamming for my Ukupin Serpent, was really easy to get many Zunimasa offhands, and I found the boots. So, in any build, the twenty-three, the extra eight fetishes would actually help out a lot. Whether you're going Grim Reaper, Quizzicoto, Drum, Carnival, any of those builds can benefit from a Zunimasa. So, the, for, so for the sake of progressing the T6 as fast as possible and getting as much done in the first 24 hours, um, on the next run, I will be targeting Zunimasa because it's easy to get the Ring of Royal Grand Door. Ogdos is easy and Kane's is easy. It's just what what point in the first 24 hours are going to drop. And then pretty much my Voodoo Helm and my weapon will be up for grabs in terms of like what is going to drop and how things are going to go. Um, worst case scenario, if I didn't get a good belt, I could have used Fleeting Strap. And I had some other nice craftables. Like if you really need an offhand for I crafted like one spite because it rolls guarantee or crit. That was a pretty decent offhand. And uh, Act 1 has some pretty has a decent bracer drop from the, uh, if you keep spamming it. I think they're called like Nemesis Bracers or something like that. You can get those situated pretty well. So um, I know that I'm going to work on my leveling process for the next trial. Uh, try to get that 1 to 30 even quicker. Cut off another 30 to 40 minutes so I have more time for the 24 hours of in-game time run. Um, what else? I know that I need to go after Azumi Masa next time. Uh, folk, well, it's leveling, then focus on getting good rings and an amulet that are rare, and getting that decent set to get the torment level one. Then it's torment level one, running the bounties to get a good ring of royal grandeur, and then it's getting towards T3 and start doing T3 riffs, and then you know, starting to get the Zuni Masa because when you're running T3s, you're focusing for that Zuni Masa, and once you get that Zuni Masa, if you can get that Zuni Masa set with the ring of royal grandeur. In the first 16 hours, then those last eight hours, you can make a big leap because you'll have perma fetish army out doing good damage, whatever build works with it well, and you'll be able to get it. So by the time you get to that 24-hour period, you'll be like, "Oh man, I'm I'm almost I'm Paragon level 100. Um, I'm doing pretty good. My item sets are pretty much laid out for me, and you know I can start transitioning to T6, because especially if you're in a group." If you can get all that knocked out in the first 24 hours, you'll definitely be doing T6, but then the group is just going to speed up the process, you know, and stuff like that. So, um, the last eight hours doesn't really require much planning because you're just grinding out to get as much as you can out of the build. So, the biggest part of this guide is going to be in the first 16 hours because that's going to set how your last eight hours go. And as long as you can build correctly and get as much or decrease the amount of leveling time it takes, and then you know go into your first initial gearing phase like i said by getting the rare items and then going for the ring and then going for you know uh zuni masa those last eight hours of the run can go really really well and hopefully the next one i can get up to about at least paragon level 100 um and break a million dps but for what it's worth um and i can show you guys right here it might be a little bit longer because we're just sitting in town talking but uh pretty much 24 hours and uh in terms of the damage and the toughness, I'm pretty happy. I got good rolls. I didn't really go for any skill damage rolls, but for Zuni Masa, I might. But I mean, I got good rolls like Ant Vitality, Life Armor, because I wanted survivability. So I didn't go for the increased skill damage. But if I go for Zuni Masa, then I definitely will get increased damage to Fetish Army. Um, I got a pretty decent offhand. Uh, the cane set rolled okay. They weren't great, they weren't perfect, but they were decent. The Task Grand Theo, I don't know how I got a Trifecta one. That was ridiculous. 
Ring of Royal Grandeur. I don't know if I'll have this luck again where I get one that has int, the attack speed, which automatically comes with it, and then be able to roll something into crit percent chance of crit damage, but I, I think I'll be able to do it again, and plus I had a socket. Um, the rare ring was pretty straightforward. I know I could definitely do that. The rare Hanabaksa, I don't think I'll replicate that in the next run. It depends on how lucky I get. The Steady Strikers, definitely, that was pretty much a lucky drop because I rolled int, vitality, attack speed, and critical chance, so that worked out pretty well. Uh, Harrington's belt wasn't too hard to build. The belts... You got fleeting strap, you got a lot of different options and stuff like that. And then like I said, the mask of drum was pretty lucky. I didn't get the crit chance towards the end though because the rerolls were getting pretty silly and my reroll on my red hole flailer was pretty uh pretty silly as well. So I look forward to doing the next runs. Um forty nine percent crit chance, forty percent critical damage. Uh everything went well initially. Uh can farm T three real fast. Uh, T6, it can limp through T6, which is not what you want, um, but I probably could do T4, T5, no problem, at a good rate, and then eventually start going over to uh, uh, Torment level 6. The only thing I can imagine I would start to do is that in this situation right here, if I had like another 8 hours, I would actually get the, uh, man, somebody's calling me late at night. Uh, what I actually would do is... I would get the uh, Ogdo Shoulders, the Ogdo Bracer, I would gamble for a Zunimasa Chest, gamble for the Zunimasa Shoes, gamble for the Zunimasa Offhand, and then I would run Canes on my pants and run uh, Canes on my gloves, but of course I have a Tasker and Theo, so I probably wouldn't do that. I would probably drop the Cane set, I would probably run Swampland Waiters, run the Zunimasa on the chest, Zunimasa on the shoes, Zunimasa on the offhand, and then I would change the uh, the Ogdos to poison damage, and I would try to get a poison necklace, and I would just go down the poison damage path, and then I would use Zunimasa with the fetishes, and I would use uh, the headhunters. So that's uh, what I would do in the next eight hours, because once you get the Zunimasa, if you can have 15 fetishes from your passive, and have eight fetishes that uh, are permanently out, that's 23 fetishes, and you have your zombie dogs out. You're going to take Midnight Feast. You'll have four zombie dogs out with your, uh, with your uh, Gargantuan. That's like really solid for T6 because you have your pets that can tank for you. You have a ton of pets which can do damage. You have Drum. You have Renho Flayler. And that would definitely put you in the T6. So in another eight hours, within 32 hours, I'd be doing T6 fast. And then at that point, it's just grinding out T6 until you can perfect... Well, until you can get like the real nice item sets where you're to the point where... You can do level 30 Sometimes on the it feels like oh, somebody's, somebody's following me and I got no privacy. Adam Mastos. And thanks for the follow. So, um, what I'm going to try to do, well, what I would do in the next eight hours after this if I was going to hours 32 and 40 would just be focusing on min-maxing all my gear, uh, making the build as most efficiently as possible so I could start getting to Greater Rift level 25 or higher and that would just be strictly just to start getting my gems up to level 25 and then after that point it would just be six T6 runs until I got double unity and I would start gambling for double unity and then once I get the double unity then I could start taking the build up higher than 30 and start making my way towards 35 maybe look for a tall man's finger and then I can just start leveling up my gems and maximizing everything and then once you get the greater of level 35 you just pretty much go back to doing T6s until you start getting SMK getting your full jade pieces where you can start taking it above the level 35 and start going towards 40 and stuff so um, that's about it that's what happened in the first uh, 24 hour Witch Doctor playthrough. I'm going to start my second Witch Doctor 24 hour playthrough probably on Friday. Uh, I'm going to take a little break today, play a little bit of League of Legends, and uh, get the guide up for the first 24 hours. So if you guys are interested, stop by on Friday. It's going to be December the 5th, and I'll be starting my leveling process again with what I learned. And then I'll, and then Saturday will be the. Uh, initial gear setup phase and Sunday will be the grind out phase for the last eight hours and then I'll probably put out another guide on uh, I'll put out another video about this on Monday for the second phase how the second phase goes and then we'll keep doing that until we go through the first four phases of this 24 hour witch doctor build and then what I'll do is I'll make it in one big guide and we'll break everything down and talk about our results and whatever and uh, we'll have our first you know, uh, we'll have our itinerary so when Seasons comes out or when a new person's making a Witch Doctor, they know exactly what to focus on. But anyways, I'm Debo. I appreciate you guys watching my YouTube videos and always checking through. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, just leave them down in the comment section.
Uh, see you guys later.